Over 10,000 years before the Third Age, the Vala, Orome, would first discover the elves upon the shores of Kuivienen. Shortly afterwards, the elves would split into two groups. One of these groups, the Eldar, would go on to feature prominently in the histories of Middle-earth, as the Noldor, the Vanya, the Sindar, or even the Nandor. However, the other group would remain behind in the east of Middle-earth, far from the lands and tales that we know about. These elves are the Avari, the Unwilling, the Refusers, the Dark Elves. In this episode of Mysteries of Middle-earth, we talk about their shrouded history and what may have happened to them. As I just said before, the Avari were the elves who didn't even start the journey to Valinor, and instead remained by the waters of Kuivienen. Some were afraid of the Vala, some were afraid of Orome's warlike nature, and others had already been deceived by Morgoth and did not trust the Vala. Some had already moved into the hills beyond Kuivienen and never even witnessed Orome. Others simply did not wish to leave, having come to love the lands of their awakening. Among these were the first 144 elves that ever awoke. This was the first sundering of the elves, and beyond this point, the Avari scarcely enter the history books of Middle-earth. Almost everything that we know about them afterwards comes from their interactions with either other elves or the Adain. Thus, the Avari have always been something of an enigma for fans of Tolkien's work. They remained in the east of Middle-earth, a land commonly associated with mystery, with things like the Blue Wizards or four of the seven dwarven clans. But the east is also a place associated with savagery and evil, at different times home to orcs, dragons, and of course, men. Many different tribes, peoples, and kingdoms, most with a single thing in common. They served the Dark Lords. Whereas the Westlands of Middle-earth have always been the domain of powerful peoples and nations of the elves or their allies, the East has always been more of an anything-goes environment. So what happens to them after we leave them behind? The first thing that comes to mind is the origin of Orcs. Depending on what legend you wish to believe, the first Orcs may have originated from Avari that were captured, tortured, and corrupted by Morgoth. There are, however, issues with the timeline, and Tolkien moved further away from this theory in the later years of his life. Still, even if not true, it is worth noting that after Orome left with the Eldar, the Avari were left to the mercies of Morgoth, and later, his servants. By not following Orome, they had made the decision to fend for themselves, forever. Still, we know that the Avari did survive through the First Age, and even split into six different tribes. These groups were roughly translated as the Kindi, the Quind, the Huenti, the Windan, Kinlai, and the Penny. In the time between Morgoth's captivity and the awakening of men, they almost certainly grew in number, and probably prospered occupying the wide, open spaces of Middle-earth. They probably spread far and wide from their original home of Kuivienen, whether east, south, or north. We do know that some of them actually travelled westwards, some merging with the Nandor who lived in the woodlands of the Vales of Anduin, whilst some actually got as far as Beleriand. There, they were mostly found in the large, foreboding woods of Tau Im Dwinath, where even the Noldor sometimes encountered them. Speaking of the Noldor encountering the Avari, this was deep into the First Age, and things had probably changed by this point. Morgoth's forces were once again active, mostly in Valerian, but the East was not completely free of his influence. Orcs remained in these lands, many of them remnants of Morgoth's old power. Men had been wandering Middle-earth for a while now, and depending on what version of events you'd like to believe, it might have been as few as several hundred years, or as many as 60,000 years. Many of these men had been corrupted by Morgoth, and it's very likely that they feared the Avari, or were possibly even outrightly hostile to them. There's also mention of dwarves who fell under the shadow as well, so the Avari probably didn't have great neighbours in the east. Quivienen also may have disappeared during this time, or perhaps at the end of the First Age, leaving the Avari without their original homeland. When the Noldor encounter the Avari in the late First Age, they don't really get along. The Noldor were far more advanced than the Avari, and the Avari treated them with hostility or even treachery. They viewed the Noldor as deserters, these forts probably coming from a place of bitterness and envy. Perhaps this bitterness and envy was because the Avari's years of prosperity were over, and they had begun to suffer at the hands of Morgoth and his servants, while the Noldor had lived peacefully in Valinor. They did, however, get along with the Sindar and the Nandor. They also seemingly got along with the ancestors of the House of Beor, whom they taught the basics of civilization to, and whose language they influence. We're not sure of the state the Avari were in at the end of the First Age. When Morgoth was finally defeated, 
Those that lived in the east probably had some reprieve, but the lands were still dangerous. Men grew more numerous by the year, and the nature of Middle-earth tells us of powerful groups of orcs praying the eastern lands, attacking men and each other, and some dragons fled east too, although their quarrels were mostly with the eastern dwarves. Shortly afterwards, Sauron becomes active, and following the war of the elves and Sauron, the east becomes his main focus. By this point, he was adamant on destroying the elves, and I doubt the Avari were exempt from that. Still, we are told that the Blue Wizards were reasonably successful in organising resistance in the Eastern Lands, and it's quite possible that the Avari played a role in this resistance. By the Third Age, the state of the Avari becomes even murkier. Palmer Elder Lamberon 17 tells us that no Avari could be found west of the Misty Mountains during the late Third Age, but this is to be expected. Another place that may betray Avari influence is the contentious land of Dowinion, on the shores of the Sea of Rune. The fact that the land has a Sindarin name, and the fact that they traded wine with the Woodland Elves, is enough evidence for some to assume that Dowinion might have been a land inhabited by Avari. Personally, I am not entirely convinced by that theory, but at the same time, I will concede that there isn't any hard evidence that suggests that it might be wrong. If Dowinion was an Avari land, it suggests that at least some of them were prospering in the late Third Age. Outside of that, I believe that the Avari might have faced some dire circumstances in the Third Age. The dominion of men, especially in the East, was fast accelerating, and given the influence of Sauron in those lands, I can't imagine the Avari had it easy. I expect they would have retreated deeper into their homelands, likely in the unknown forests and mountains of those lands. I expect they would have become a dwindling people, their culture and technology becoming increasingly stagnant, dwelling in isolation and fearful of outsiders. I think by the end of the Third Age, they would have finally understood that Middle-earth was never meant for them. Of course, I could be wrong. It's possible that the Avari actually prospered late into the Third Age, and that the bleak picture I just painted never actually came to pass. But either way, we still know the ultimate fate of the Avari, and it's sad, and perhaps even scarier than being destroyed in war. This is the fate that all elves who stayed in Middle-earth would inescapably face. Fading. This concept is explained in Morgoth's Ring, that Morgoth's taint upon Arda would eventually weaken an elf's body, their thrower, until it was consumed by their spirit, their fail. At this point, an elf would become little more than an invisible ghost, being unable to physically interact with the world in any tangible way. The only way to escape this fate was to go to Valinor, a place where the elves would not fade. Thus, the Noldor and most of the Sindar end up sailing into the west, but the Avari either would not or could not go. To put it bluntly, the Avari would face a slow but inevitable extinction in Middle-earth. How long this would take, or when this would eventually happen, is unknown. Tolkien suggests in Nature of Middle-earth that elves start to fade after 14,000 years of the sun, but it's unknown how this would fit into established canon. What Tolkien does suggest though is that this process accelerated in the Fourth Age, and that the remaining elves would fade all the more quicker. It's possible that those first elves, those that awoke by the shores of Cuivienna, had already faded by the Third Age, assuming they had not been slain first. Their ghosts would linger in their old homes, and over time, their descendants would join them, until their people dwindled away. In the end, the last Avari would dwell in the haunted ruins of their people's homes, surrounded by the ghosts of their friends and family, visible to them, but beyond communication. At last, the final Avar would fade away and they would become little more than myths or legends, and men would gradually assimilate their lands, unaware of the ghosts that walk among them. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed it, or at least found it interesting, or perhaps even a little sad. That was my intention. I apologize. If you want to learn more about the Avari, I'm afraid there isn't a single place I can recommend, as they really only exist as scraps in the multitude of Tolkien's writings. They are truly a mystery, and if you wish to have your own headcanon about them, then you have plenty of blank spaces you can fill in. Thanks, farewell, and remember, if you get an offer to go to heaven on earth, it might be wise to take it. <laughs>